Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna cover a high level kind of anatomy of a GitHub action and uh, apply those to runners that I previously created. I did both a, um, a Linux runner and I have runners running in the OpenShift environment. So we're gonna go through just a quick high level demo on that too, but I really wanted to break down the various components of a GitHub action. When you write an action for automation in CI CD, uh, it'll be stored in this uh, .github workflows and you can give it a name, uh, .yaml, and this could be uh, YAML or YML, doesn't matter. You give that action a particular name, in this case, my first action. And then you wanna have a, a trigger on an event. An event could be a push, it could be a pull request, it could be an issue that you create, um, whether you're opening an issue, closing an issue, stuff like that, maybe creating a branch, any, uh, any particular event can then trigger the workflow, and the workflow would then contain these uh, jobs. It could be one or more jobs. In this case, we've got yeah, my first job, it says runs on, and then there's a, 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 this saying Ubuntu latest, so if you're in Enterprise Cloud, it's gonna use the GitHub hosted runners, and it's just gonna build this VM for you in Azure, and then it's gonna run uh, run the steps on that VM. And once that VM has completed the steps, it'll it'll you know, cycle that VM off. And for Enterprise, I think you get like 50,000 free minutes a month. Um, so if you wanna start playing around with that on the cloud, uh, definitely check that out. And they also give you some free minutes on the even the free subscription. Uh, so check out you know, how many minutes you have available, and you can start, start playing around with this, maybe even in your free repo, if you want to do some some building uh, some, or some automation on, on your workflows there. So definitely check that out. And then, of course, this, um, this uh, job will then contain various steps. Now, I should mention that you can have more than one job, right? So in that case, the job uh, would run in parallel. So you've got my first job, and if I had another one that said my second job, then my first job would be dispatched to a runner, and my second job would also be dispatched to a runner at the same time. Now, keep that in mind because if you need them to run sequentially, then you want to say my first, uh, my, like my first job, and then when you write the second job, my second job, and then needs colon my first job, right? So then it's going to run this one, and when these steps are completed, then it will run job two. So for job one, in this case, it's going to have these steps that are in there, and now the steps run sequentially. So it's a little confusing. Jobs would run in parallel by default. You can have them sequential with the needs command, but the steps within a job will run sequentially, right? So this is doing a checkout. This is a default GitHub uh, action that it's, uh, that it's calling, and then we're doing npm install, and then we're installing the linter here, right? So this is a quick little uh, process that, to, to build this action. Now we're gonna do that over here too. Now I do have, again, I have a couple of runners that are, that are configured. If we go to actions here, We'll see under runners, I'm at the org level. I've got an enterprise level runner, uh, Boz, and I've got three uh, runners that are currently uh, hosted on my OpenShift environment uh, that are waiting for jobs. So they're all in idle uh, and they do a long pull from those runners to the uh, GitHub instance and just saying, hey, do you got a job for me? And we'll, we'll, we'll do that. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll just do like a quick, again, this is all high level. We'll create a new repo, we'll say test. And let's just create a readme file in there, create the repository. And all right, well, let's go into test and we'll just go ahead and run that action. And we'll create a new one. And there's some you know, canned actions you can run here. You can also search uh, for different types of actions uh, within the marketplace. But we're just gonna say, uh, let's create a, you know, just a default action. And it's given us a, you know, a, kind of a template here and uh, CI is the name of it, that's fine. And here's on, and again, here's different events uh, by default that could be triggered. Uh, I'm not gonna do any of these. I'm gonna actually, I want this to happen manually. So in my case, I'm gonna say that I want it to be on work, workflow dispatches right here, right? So this will give me, it, it, I have to actually manually trigger the, uh, um, the action in order to execute. Now this says uh, jobs, uh, so I've got one job here, and we'll actually create a separate, separate job down below. Runs on self-hosted. Now again, I have two self-hosted runner groups. I have one that is on OpenShift, and I have one that is in Boz, uh, which is at Linux, so we'll say Boz here. And so this, I could actually just say Boz, All right, because it needs to match this. Uh, in order to uh, to execute. So this will run on that Linux machine. And then if we kind of just scroll down, so we got some steps here, uh, actions, uh, 
one line script. Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. So this is hello world. Okay, so let's add a second one and we'll do, um, uh, let's see, this is build. Let's call that hello. So we know what's going on here, hello. And then we'll do uh, goodbye, good, bye. And then here we'll say needs because we want this to run after this one and we'll say hello. So now it says uh, needs hello. And then here we'll just go ahead and say steps, or wait, runs on, runs on. And I will say open shift. Uh, so this will trigger then my OpenShift runner. So this will run in the Linux box and this will run on the OpenShift runner. And then uh, steps needs, I'm just checking my alignment, yeah, steps, um, name, goodbye, world. Now you can run these again as, a, as an action, but you can also use a shell command. So here I'm just gonna say run uh, echo goodbye world shell bash. And that's it. Why is this needs runs on, oh, runs plural runs on, there we go. Okay, so that should be it. We've got two jobs. The, they will run sequentially, not uh, in parallel because of this needs command. Uh, if I didn't have that, again, it would run them both in parallel. All right, so that's good. We'll commit that. And when we go to the actions window here, it says CI. If this has the full path, it's kind of a telltale here, or telltale, is that telltale? But if this has the full path to the file, then you immediately know that there's um, something wrong in the uh, format of that file. It just says CI, which is our name, so we know that that one actually worked good. And because we did workflow dispatch, it's a manual trigger. So let's go ahead and run that. There we go, popped up. And then we'll see that we've got two bubbles here. Uh, again, remember goodbye says needs hello. So hello will be dispatched and executed first. You see it's being executed right now on Boz. Once that's done, then it's gonna go to uh, goodbye and then goodbye will, will execute on our OpenShift environment over here. It'll spin the job up over here. And if we go to it, you can actually see that there it is, runner, uh, at the organization level. Uh, if we look at 4NGRT, it's gonna take only a couple seconds. 4G, it's one of these. Yeah, 4, 6, G, there it is, GRT, that one. All right, so it's running on that runner. Not that it's a big deal, but now uh, we've completed it, right? So we've got uh, our first action that ran, couldn't have been simpler, uh, but we've got two jobs working in, uh, working in se sequence. And we can see that we've, you know, it's completed all those actions. It did the checkout. It did the one line script. And then we'll go to goodbye here and it executed the, sh the shell command, uh, no problem. So that's it. I just really wanted to go over again, kind of a brief 101. It took like what, a couple of minutes to go through that? Just to give you some sort of idea how to start applying actions and, and how actions work in your environment. And again, you know, how to, how to use those runners from that previous video. So um, that's all for this video. Uh, Please like, subscribe, share uh, if you uh, found any value in this. And if you have any recommendations on uh, videos you'd like to see, whether they're GitHub or OpenShift related, feel free to uh, reach out. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, like always. Uh, until the next time.